Welcome to AIN Debrief, where we take a deeper look at the most important or interesting aviation story of the past week with the AIN editor who covered it. I'm AIN News Editor Chad Trotvetter. In this episode, AIN Contributing Editor Mark Huber explains the 5G C-band interference issue that can affect aircraft radar altimeters. He explains how we even got into this situation, why there is a potential for the 5G wireless networks at Verizon and AT&T to interfere with radar altimeters, what the FAA is currently doing to temporarily ease the problem, and what can be done long-term to solve the issue. This podcast is sponsored by Business Aviation Sustainability Solutions Company, 4Air. Okay, Mark, so uh, the wireless carriers, uh, namely AT&T and Verizon, uh, switched on their 5G C-band frequencies this week, and it's causing some issues with uh, avionics, specifically aircraft radar altimeters. So before we get into the technical aspects and what we can do to fix the problem, uh, how do we get here? Um, Well... You can trace it all the way back to 1966 when the original um, radar altimeter spec um, was developed. Um, At that point, no one really anticipated that there'd be a lot of players, uh, you know, near what frequencies they operated on on the C-band. And then, you know, of course, we got the satellite C-band service, but that really wasn't much of an issue. Uh, But as people went to X-band and abandoned um, C-band for satellite communications, in large part, that frequency spectrum was unused and the wireless carriers realized that this was an optimum combination of range and coverage and decided that they wanted it. And the FCC decided that they wanted to auction it. They saw it as a valuable asset uh, about eh, 2016 or so. And they set in motion uh, the plan to auction off that spectrum to the wireless carriers as part of their 5G service. Um, That's sort of where we're at. Um, Almost immediately, aviation interests realized that this would be something of a problem. The Aerospace Vehicle Systems Institute uh, published initial findings on C-band radar altimeter interference in 2019, followed by the Radio Technical Commission for Aeronautics report in October 2020, which clearly showed uh, the potential for interference for uh, airlines, uh, business and general aviation, and particularly helicopters. Uh, Nevertheless, the Spectrum auction went forward in December uh, of 2020. And uh, ever since then, people have been trying to iron out this thing, but it really didn't pick up speed, of course, until the last minute, as is the case for most uh, contentious issues in Washington. So what, uh, what is the technical aspect? What, why is this an issue? Okay. Radio altimeter um, frequencies were a lot less uh, precise um, than they were, you know, than people are used to now. And so uh, they were supposed to operate the 4.2 to 4.4 gigahertz And uh, there was some splash over, and they were also susceptible to signals um, because of the filtering wasn't as good back then uh, in the 3.7 to 3.98, where uh, the wireless carriers intend to operate on the C-band. And they also intend to operate at a very high power because they don't want to build a lot of towers. Um, So that's kind of the problem here. It's splash over. So what, it, what does it do to the radar altimeter and how does it affect the aircraft then? Uh, you can get imprecise signals um, or your radar altimeter will just show as, you know, inoperative or, or there'll be a fault warning. Um, the danger, of course, is the imprecise signals because it can give you one altitude when you're really another. You can initiate a flare too early or too late if you're using an auto land system. Um spoilers, thrust reversers, auto brakes, all that stuff come out either too early or too late. Um, it's a big problem. Um, TAWS doesn't work like it's supposed to. Um, all kinds of bad things. That Anything that's slave to a radar altimeter it has the potential to give you a false reading. That also includes uh, HUD slash 
EFES, which is enhanced vision systems, that all affects low visibility or the ability to uh, land at low visibility conditions at airports, right? Right. And, you know, as you know, certain runways are, you know, qualified for that and certain runways are not. So the FAA in December issued 1,500 NOTAMs, basically restricting certain operations at certain airports um, based on what they perceive to be the perceived threat of C-band interference at those locations. And the, the real world practical application of this is, you know, higher minimums, not being able to land on certain runways at certain times, certain conditions, but also for the people who live near the airports, um, a lot of runways are used um, because of noise abatement procedures at night. Uh, for example, in Milwaukee, typically they like to use runway 119 at night uh, for noise abatement. And now they're probably going to have to bring that traffic in from the west or the east over uh, 2, 5, and 7 over some residential neighborhoods. So, I mean, you're going to get noise complaints as well on top of the safety issue. The FCC this week, uh, the FCC and the wireless carriers um, basically said that the uh, FAA and airline industry acted too late. Um, and they're, they're also saying that, uh, you know, hey, this is, you know, Europe is already doing this. So, you know, if they can, if uh, 5G in the airlines can operate um, in harmony in Europe, then there's no reason why they can't do it here in the U.S. So um, tell us why that may not be the case. Yeah, I mean, the European C-band system and the American C-band system, um, when it comes to 5G, are really apples and oranges. The American system is going to be operated at higher power uh, with antennas operated at higher angles. The European system operates at lower power and around airports, they've deflected those antennas from the tower uh, to greater downward angles. I think it was about 1600 watts in the US and about 600 in Europe. Yeah, so a little over double. Did the air, did the did the FAA really react too late? I think the FAA could have been more aggressive. Certainly, um, you know the wireless carriers were very reluctant to turn over technical data, including tower location and other things, until early December of last year, and that really didn't give people enough time, um, you know, to figure out the scope of the problem and develop a, a reasonable solution to the problem. So, you know, it was a combination of things. Um, but, you know, you know, the FCC, basically, um, the spectrum was auctioned off for $80 billion. And, you know, that's a big number to get around. Okay, before we get into the uh, FA notums and the uh, alternative means of compliance that the FA is uh, working on, let's take a quick break from our sponsor, uh, For Air. Now more than ever, taking to the sky means taking responsibility for the climate-altering emissions released into our environment with every departure. That's because the future of our shared planet, along with the freedom of mobility that defines our way of life, depends on today's pursuit of absolute sustainability. There is no one solution, but with 4Air, you can advance every pillar of aviation sustainability. Learn how to make your flying part of the solution with a comprehensive sustainability commitment for individuals and operators alike. Visit 4air.aero today. That's numeral 4AIR dot AERO. And we're back, Mark. So um, tell us about the FA notums that were issued last week um, and how the FA is addressing. Uh, basically getting airplanes cleared to be able to fly in this environment. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, the NOTAMs were issued anywhere uh, near airports or commercial heliports where 5G C-band interference could potentially be a problem. And then basically the radar altimeter manufacturers in combination with the airframers had to determine based on the technical data received, 
if they could clear large blocks of aircraft with certain altimeter installations to operate safely in this environment. Um, and also the wireless carriers had agreed to power down uh, their 5G transmission transmitters near about 50 select airports, which the FAA put out that list a couple of weeks ago now. Um, so they're clearing these large blocks of commercial aircraft, and I suspect they will use that model when it comes to business aircrafts and, and helicopters down the road. But for people who have a non-standard installation or a custom installation, uh, the road to uh, AMOC approval is going to be uh, a little more complex. So what's the solution, either near-term or long-term? The long-term, the solution is you replace all the uh, radar altimeters with the uh, new devices that are something more precise. Short-term, uh, certain systems can be filtered. Um, certain radio, radar altimeter manufacturers are working on developing filters, but depending upon where the filter is placed, you know, along the transmission cable or elsewhere on the aircraft, it's going to impact um, the range of the radar altimeter and the precision of the radar altimeter. And uh, those calculations need to be made for each uh, filter installation. So actually, let's get into helicopters um, because I know that uh, EMS operations are greatly affected by this uh, as they require uh, working radar altimeters to operate at night and landing zones which basically means on the side of a highway picking up a patient. So um, it's not an airport or a heliport. So, you know, these things are kind of on the fly. So what is the FAA, what is the FAA doing about that to facilitate EMS operations and other helicopter operations that are critical? Yeah. As you know, a couple of years ago, uh, new legislation was passed requiring radar altimeters in all part 135 um, helicopters, uh, particularly air ambulances. Uh, the applicable uh, parts of the uh, FARs on that are 135.160 and 135.179. Um, the Helicopter Association International filed for an exemption uh, to this um, based on you know, what they saw coming with, with 5G interference. Now, the um, exemption uh, to uh, the requirement was denied. However, uh, they granted uh, an exemption to 91205, uh, which basically uh, says that you have to have normally functioning radar altimeters to use NVGs or night vision goggles. Uh, that was granted on the basis that it's in the, in the public interest. And so the practical uh, uptake from that is that uh, air ambulance operator, helicopter air ambulance operators can use NVGs if they don't have a functioning radar altimeter, but they also have to either do a high reconnaissance before they go in or have a ground spotter that they're connected to by radio. Hey, what about uh, business aircraft? I mean, you talked about 50 airports where they're um, with buffer zones basically for 5G. Um, but there's approximately 5,100 airports in the U.S. Um, so what's being done for business aviation then, or general aviation? In, in well, AMOCs have to be developed for that yet, and that's going to be a very complex and lengthy process. Obviously, where there are standard installations um, for EVS and HUDs and things of that nature in the larger business jets, it's going to be a lot easier to get AMOCs for that than a a custom installation and in, in say, you know, a Baron or something like that. So it's just a question of time, but it's, it's going to take um, months uh, to get this all unraveled. And then it's really only a short term solution. This isn't an optimum solution. It still doesn't give you the freedom to use the systems like you could before uh, the no damps. So I guess, you know, we are where we are. So what do crews do? Uh, how can they report? issues um, in the in the current environment? It's very important to uh, report any kind of interference that you encounter. Uh, obviously, you can use the NASA ASRS 
um, reporting tool on the NASA website, MBAA, and uh, the Helicopter Association International, HAI, is also requesting that their members um, go to their websites, their 5G dedicated pages on their websites, and report any interference. Of course, here at AIM, we'd like to hear about it, too. And we have a way for people to report that directly to us, and we'll be publicizing uh, those instances um, where radar altimeter interference is detected. All right. Thanks, Bork. Thanks for your time and explaining the whole situation. Thank you, Jim. Thanks for listening to AI and Debrief. Another podcast episode will air next Friday. In the meantime, go to www.ainonline.com for the latest aviation news from AIN.